The following is a paid presentation for attacking anxiety and depression. My doctor eventually just said, I don't know what else I can do um, for what we're doing. And that really floored me. I was angry because I couldn't help me. And then he couldn't help me. Where was I to go? When my anxiety was at its worst, uh, my main fear was that all the work that I had done in my life up to this point was worthless, almost as if the anxiety was a thief and bottled up all your talents and all your energy and wouldn't let you release it. I thought I had gone crazy. I thought it was schizophrenia. Even though I knew what schizophrenia was, I had no symptoms of schizophrenia. I thought for sure that was the road I was going. Even 10 miles was a difficult distance for me to drive. My parents lived about 30 miles away, so there was about a year that I didn't even go and see them. Like I was very dependent on my mom. I felt I was losing control. I'd never heard anything about this before. I've been pretty ill for probably five years. Really, really scared. Worried that I wasn't gonna get any better. There was no answer anywhere. The only answer I got was through Lucinda. Anxiety and depression are the leading emotional problems in our country today. An estimated one out of five Americans have suffered or will suffer from some form of anxiety or depression disorder. Some of the most commonly written prescriptions are for anti-anxiety and antidepressant medications. Many experts believe anxiety and depression to be primary causes of alcohol abuse. Do you know what it's like to obsess about your health? Do you know what it's like to sit on a turbulent flight and be filled with fear? Do you know how painful it feels to worry constantly? Have you ever felt so helpless and hopeless you found it difficult just to muster up the energy to do the simplest of things? Do you know how it feels to constantly beat yourself up for not being good enough? Do you know the feelings of embarrassment and guilt that come from explosive anger? Well, I do. I'm Lucinda Bassett, the president of the Midwest Center for Stress and Anxiety, and these were some of the things I experienced when I suffered with anxiety and depression. able to breathe. I felt very uncomfortable. Um, I would notice my heart rate would always go up. I didn't know that it was because of my anxiety. I just, I didn't know. I really didn't know. I was in, I was in the dark. I had always thought, well, I'm, I'm not, gonna, I'm never going to be responsible. I'm never going to be secure. I'll always worry. I'll be one of these people that always does that. It was like another person. I just, I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. I started having more frequent panic attacks and started avoiding elevators and then planes and public transportation. For many years, I appeared to be somebody who had a lot of things going for them. Uh, health, youth, uh, good education, uh, good career. And so it's why I never really understood why I felt so bad all the time. We went from doctor to doctor. She was um, glued to my side for three or four months. Um, she was unable to go to school, unable to function, couldn't be in public places. I've suffered with anxiety, um, generalized anxiety, for maybe 10 years or so. Always doubting myself, always questioning everything I did, nothing was ever good enough. I was always waiting for the next disaster to happen. I knew there was something, I didn't know exactly what it was either, and, and she at times would say, you know, you, you don't understand, and you don't understand, and uh, it, it, it would get frustrating. The feeling of relief and hope that came over me when I saw the program. I knew, I knew that I wasn't crazy. I knew that there was help. These people were talking, and you could tell they were talking from their hearts. This wasn't. I'm such a. I was such a cynical person. You know, this isn't just a quack thing and a, a something to, to a money-making scheme. You know, these people. How could they know my feelings? There's something to this. This is the program. worry about the disaster that's looming around the corner. We do, my and God. The Midwest Center is dedicated to helping those with anxiety and depression. It was founded by Lucinda Bassett and Dr. Philip Fisher. Lucinda is a trainer of trainers for the American Medical Association. She has shared her techniques with McDonald's Corporation, AT&T, Ford Motor Company, the Ladies Professional Golfers Association, and others. She has appeared on hundreds of radio and television programs, including Oprah, Montel, The View, and Regis. Her work has been featured in many newspapers and magazines, such as Health, 
the Journal of Clinical Psychology, Cosmopolitan, Family Circle, and many more. Anxiety and depression are two of the principal reasons people miss work, go to the doctor, abuse alcohol, and take prescription medications. They're also two of the main reasons people don't reach their full potential, can't enjoy their success, why they don't have healthy relationships, and can't achieve peace of mind. So how about you? Are you really living your life fully? Or are you consumed with worry and fear, waiting for the next disaster to strike, hoping that eventually things will calm down, that you'll calm down? If you're challenged by more severe anxiety, such as panic attacks, phobias, obsessive compulsive disorder, or if you're simply dealing with constant worry and out of control anger, this program, Attacking Anxiety and Depression, can change your life forever. For a long time I had real, very low self-esteem and, and real, really a lot of insecurities. I was using food to, to, to calm myself down. I used to weigh 289, almost 290 pounds. I wore sweat clothes all the time. I felt really horrible. I thought of this as, I was of no use to anybody. When tangible things start to happen to you, like to go to school, get good grades, uh, you know, someone hires you for a job, my boss will lost 50 pounds. You can't just say, oh, I guess I got kind of lucky. It's like, no, you actually went out and, and did the work for those things. And I got that thing with Simba. When anxious people come to my office, the symptoms they complain of are related directly to their anxiety. However, they don't realize this and assume their shortness of breath, sweating, dizziness, rapid heart rate, and upset stomach are physical problems. In fact, they're due to their anxiety. I wasn't feeling well because my heart was going very fast. And then that night, it just went extremely fast where I palpitated, couldn't breathe. I said, okay, it's, I'm going to the ER. They couldn't find anything wrong, and I was told that it was anxiety. My anxiety got so bad, um, and then I became agoraphobic. I actually became um, housebound for about, I would say, six months or so. And um, it felt like I lost all my independence. Um, I had to count on other people to do things for me. I felt that I was missing things. Everything was passing me by. Uh, the world was passing me by. My kids, I, I couldn't do things with them. I, Mom, let's go here. You want to go to the mall? Normal things. Want to go to lunch? I just was like... I'm not, I really don't want to, and I gave excuses, and that made me angry and sad that I couldn't even control that. I'm uh, 27 years old, and uh, I'm a writer and a producer, uh, a career that, uh, uh, at least so far, has been a very rewarding. But for so many years, despite what outwardly uh, people would call success and, and, and what people would call uh, well-being, I didn't have it. There was uh, fear of irrational things that I didn't want to have, but I couldn't get it out of my head. Uh, fear of sickness, uh, sometimes even a fear of death and, and, and illness when I had no illnesses. There was just a lot of anxiety about um, being in a strange environment. Uh, going to a conference room and not knowing where the nearest bathroom is. I'm a scientist that works in air pollution control. During my master's program, I was, I was stressed. I was in a field where there were very few women, and I was beginning to experience anxiety, some of which I'd had younger, and it was intensifying. So we went from medication to medication, and my doctor eventually just said, I, I don't know what else I can do. Um, but what we're doing, and that really floored me. When I saw the infomercial, I was at my lowest low. I looked at it and I, I saw me. If there's somebody out there that thinks and hears a doctor say, there's nothing I can do, we've done it all. Walk away, because it's wrong. The program lets you be who you are. It doesn't so much change you as it gets rid of all the negative worries, the irrational, uh, nonsensical things that have been in your mind that prevented you from being who you are. I remember the night like it was yesterday and I couldn't sleep and I turned the TV on and I turned the channel and I heard this woman or man, I don't remember, if, I just remember it was my story. They were talking and they were saying, they were describing all my symptoms. The attacking anxiety tapes were self-paced and they were so great because they had people that sounded like me. At one point I, I was suicidal. I was so overwhelmed I just couldn't take it anymore. I felt very distressed and everyone has their opinion on what you should do. Um, they say, you know, you're, she's not getting better with the doctors that you have. You need to go here, you need to go there. And everywhere that I took her, 
They said, your doctor is doing exactly the right treatment. There is nothing else to do. We saw the program and figured, you know, we'll give it a shot. We got it in the mail and it was amazing. I felt so not alone. I wasn't alone anymore. I had answers for the first time in years. Are you a what if thinker? Well, what if you could use the same type of thinking to change your life for the better? What if you got rid of your fear and anxiety for good? What if you could enjoy life like never before? What if you became more confident, less angry, and more at peace with yourself than you ever dreamed? What if you weren't afraid of change and taking a chance? What if you were feeling confident that you could take care of yourself no matter what? Changing the course of your thoughts with the new Attacking Anxiety and Depression program may change the course of your life forever. I had always thought, well, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm never going to be responsible. I'm never going to be secure. I'll always worry. I'll be one of these people that always does that. And I, in the back of my mind, I thought, no, there's, 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 you, don't, you don't have to go through life that way. There's got to be some answer. Through Lucinda's help, I found out that, that you can decide to do something and, and actually make it work. If somebody's listening to me and, and they know my symptoms, they're, they're, they're going to get on the phone right away. They are, because they know this is it. But there might be others that are saying, well, it's not that bad. I didn't have panic attacks and I didn't think I was going crazy. If you're in pain and you're even doubting it and you know that there's something wrong and you know it, they know it already, make the call. Make the call. If I hadn't gone through the program, many parts of my life would be pretty much the same. The difference is I would have been much more miserable and unable to enjoy the things that were going on in my life. I have totally changed my life since the program. Actually, I've bettered it even from when before I actually had anxiety. Without the program, I probably would still be in my house trying to find a way to come off the medication. Before, I couldn't do very many things. Life was a challenge, and it still is, but because of the program, I'm getting back on track. You know, nobody's paying me to say this. I've been through, you know, panic and anxiety problems for probably 30 years off and on. And I have been to therapists and I have medication, and I've talked to, to counselors, and all things have their place. But to be able to get a program like the Attacking Anxiety program that you can do at your own pace, that's a relatively minor investment that people on the tape know what they're talking about that has support, um, you know, telephone support in addition to it and a workbook that you can take away with you and, and little cards. It's just an amazing tool that's absolutely worth it. I'm Lucinda Bassett, founder of the Midwest Center for Stress and Anxiety. I suffered with anxiety and depression and panic attacks for over 20 years. I was afraid of everything, my thoughts, losing control, death and dying and illness. I was consumed with worry, but I didn't know that these were symptoms of anxiety and depression. I believe I suffered with anxiety and depression all those years so that I could help other people do what I've done, recover completely. Our program has helped hundreds of thousands of people when other methods of help have failed. I've produced a seminar on tape that will show you the amazing results that others have achieved and how you can control your anxiety and depression. Medication isn't the long-term answer, and living with constant worry and fear and what-if thinking is exhausting. Call the number on your screen today, and I'll send you my seminar tape for free. Call the number on your screen. Someone who understands what you're going through is waiting to take your call right now. It enables you to get control of your life again and to be excited about living. I can really start doing some things that I want to do now without having the psychological fears cripple me along the way. The program changed my life because it gave my life back. I didn't have a life. This program really works. It really works. It saved my life. It definitely saved my life. Not only am I not living in fear, but I'm dreaming and, you know, I'm really going for it. And it's all from this program. I was afraid to be left alone. Someone would have to be with me all the time. Running this simple errand, like getting milk from the closest store, was an effort. The depression just makes you feel so alone. Nothing can help you. And there's nobody out there like you. I felt totally hopeless. I felt like there was no hope whatsoever. I went through six medical doctors, two cardiologists, and four psychiatrists. And they all said the same thing, that there was nothing wrong with you. I lived in my own world. I, I did my job, but I felt very insecure about everything I did. The depression and the obsessive thoughts were a real problem for me. I would have thoughts 
They were like the grinding of my bones. I was going through some strange moods of, of just being short of breath, of uh, a fear of dying, um, being boxed in and closed in, afraid to leave the house. With a lightheaded and dizziness, I thought, okay, I've got a brain tumor. And with the palpitations of the heart and the breathing problem, I thought, I'm going to have a heart attack. Well, I didn't. You know, but at the time, it's so scary, you just don't want to have to face that again. The most common fears I see people come in with in my office are, are fear of dying, uh, fear of having a heart attack, and fear of, quote, going crazy, unquote. Uh, that's an especially big one with people that suffer from anxiety and depression because they know something is wrong. In their mind, they sense it, um, and they don't know why. The bodily symptoms were the worst. It was very painful, the chest pain, um, the lightheaded, and dizzy, uh, nauseous constantly, couldn't eat, uh, at times just immobilized. Going through nursing school, I had terrible panic every class. My um, biggest limitation was speaking in front of people. If I heard the word presentation or speech, m my blood ran cold. As a physician, and uh, more so as Tammy's uh, husband, it was uh, frustrating many times because I couldn't, you know, quite um, take care of the uh, the problem. I would have fear. I would avoid situations. I would have heart palpitations, sweating. Um, all I knew was I wanted to be home. I, if I was home, I would be safe. I couldn't even pick my son up from the bus stop, which was only 10 minute drive. I eventually went to a psychologist and he prescribed an antidepressant. Well, I had a major panic attack at the drugstore trying to sign the paper for this prescription. And I took it home and I reluctantly took one and I did not like the way it made me feel and I never took another one. I realized I needed um, more help than I was getting for myself. One of the benefits of this program is something that might not be apparent. And that is other problems that people have which are so related to anxiety and depression improve. These are things like excess alcohol consumption, cigarette smoking, and overeating, all of which can be linked to anxiety and depression. At the time I met Ann, I was drinking, like I said, about a case, case and a half of beer a day. Um, get up in the morning, um, had a six pack of beer, went to work, came home from work, had a half a case of beer, maybe a little bit more. The alcohol did not help the anxiety whatsoever. It, it may have numbed it a little bit, it always came back the next morning. So the next morning, I always had to drink more to get rid of it. The depression just makes you feel so alone that it that it that no nothing can help you, and there's nobody out there like you. Being alone at night um, by myself, I had time to dwell about my feelings, and then the depression, the, all the walls are you know closing in on me. I'm here by myself. Um, there's there's got to be something out there that's got to help me. I was in my last year of theology school, studying to be a minister, and all of a sudden I found myself through a situation I was in. I would call I'll call it a lot of unrealistic expectations I had of myself. I thought I'm not good enough for God. I'll never be good enough for God. I'm not good enough for the people that uh, that I go to school with. I thought if I ever do become a minister, I probably won't be a very good one. But I put all this garbage on myself. And through that, that's when I started to struggle with the anxiety and all the different symptoms and the shortness of breath and the, and the sickness in the stomach and the feeling like I'm losing control. And ultimately that led into so much depression. My, my escape at that time was sleep. At that time I did it as an excuse. I'm just tired, so I feel so horrible. I wasn't tired. I was clinically depressed and, and severely anxious. I woke up one morning and out of the blue it was just like I had an uninvited guest come in, it, it took over my mind, it took over my body, and it took over my soul. And I noticed that I would panic the minute I got out of bed for no reason at all. And then it progressively got worse and I could not even open the door to my house to go out to my mailbox to get the mail. Sally and I were on the, um, we were in the church choir together and um, she stopped coming to church. Um, unexpectedly and I took over her 11 o'clock mass. We didn't know why she stopped coming to church. Uh, we learned later that she had been having anxiety attacks. When Anita stopped coming to the mass, little did I know that we were both going through the same thing, which is panic and anxiety uh, disorders. And at that time I was already recuperating with your products because my husband purchased them for me. And I said, well look, I've got these fantastic 
I go and they helped me. I had no idea that I was going through any kind of an anxiety or panic attack. I didn't even want to admit that I was depressed. Just watching her explain what she'd gone through and how this had helped her, just give it a try. I need to just listen to it. I have the tools that I didn't know were out there until I received those products in the mail. Once I understood what my body was doing to me, once I understood how to use the techniques, everything changed. I was back out. I stopped medication. My life has changed so much. People just look at me like, oh, where have you been? It's so good to have you back. If you suffer silently with feelings of fear, overwhelm, panic and anxiety, fatigue, depression, helplessness and hopelessness, the new Attacking Anxiety and Depression program can be the road to recovery you've been searching for. Since the program, I have, uh, I, I, life has opened up for me. We took skiing lessons, uh, the whole family. That's probably something that I wouldn't have tried before. Uh, I'm learning piano with my children. I just feel I'm out there and I'm healthy and, and I have a chance. I had probably had this particular problem on and off for 20 years. Good news is I've been alcohol free since November 1st, 94. Not one drop of alcohol. A couple of months ago when my sister was diagnosed with terminal cancer, I knew that I had to drive to go and, and be with her and help her. I didn't know how I would do this because I couldn't even go 10 minutes to a bus stop to pick up my son. But at the time she was diagnosed happened to be at the same time I received my attack and anxiety and depression program. I made the trip to Illinois with my mother and it was eight hours for us. My mother's not young, she's 85, and that was a challenge, but we did it. If it hadn't been for the program, Attacking Anxiety and Depression, I would not have been able to go down to my sister's, and I would have lost out on a very special time with her. And I will forever be grateful for that. What I learned through Attacking Anxiety is to learn to like myself and to value myself and stop beating the daylights out of myself. I struggled so much as a Christian and as a minister with God's love. You know, I could do everything for God and try so hard, but never felt like it was ever good enough. It's revolutionized my life and my relationship with God. One of those nights, feeling very anxious and, and trying to have a good night's sleep, I had watched it on TV and saw the program. I said, I have to do this. It educated me. I'm no longer titling myself as being a freak. I'm normal. I'm, I can have fun. I can go to dinners and be sociable. And I can smile again. I don't have to. When my husband says, uh, comes home and says, how was your day? It was great. It was fine. I had a great day. And I don't have to go into a room and cry. If I cry, it's because I hurt myself or, or you know, I stub my toe or it's, it's, it's a real cry. It's not, it's not something because I'm depressed. There are people that are out there that aren't, you know, speaking out. You have to talk about it and you've got to get help and this is what you have to do. It'll help you. Absolutely, it'll help you. I didn't really want to talk on the phone. I didn't want to have any visitors. I even shied away from my grandkids because I was afraid that I would have a panic attack and they would see me and heaven knows I didn't want them to see their Nana in that position. I felt bad for my husband because I felt like I was cheating him out of the good times that we used to have. After trying so many medications, I thought this is it. I felt worse taking the medicines than I did putting up with the panic, if you can believe that. My daughter, who's a diabetic educator at the, our local hospital, found this program through one of her co-workers. My daughters have seen a really big difference in me. I do more things with them. I'm there and they can just come in and be, be them. You know, they don't have to worry about, am I gonna upset mom? Is she gonna have a panic attack? I went to Columbus with my oldest daughter to take my old, one of my grandsons to an allergist. In the car on the way home, she said probably one of the nicest things to me, she said, or to her son, she said, Jonathan, we finally got Nana back. And to me, I thought that's all that needed to be said. Anxiety and depression manifest in many different ways. And so often people suffer for years, not even knowing what's wrong with them or that effective help is available. But what if you could be happy and peaceful and feel in control again? What if you could control those scary thoughts? What if you could be more confident and less afraid? What about your life might be different right now? What if you don't do anything to get help? Pick up the phone, 
You owe it to yourself to call now. You've got nothing to lose except anxiety and depression. After seeing four counselors, after trying medication, after taking dozens of psychology courses myself, and being a, a qualified minister able to help other people, and honestly thinking there's no help for me, and no one is ever going to help me, and I'll live the rest of my life like this. And all I can say is that, that this program works, and it is simple to go through, it is enjoyable to go through, and, and it changed my life, and I do not know where I would be today without it. Anita's back, <laughs> and I'm back, and that's due to that program. One of the best things about the program was that I found people who were like me, and I, I could not feel so alone. You have to talk about it, and you've got to get help, and this is what you have to do. It'll help you. Absolutely, it'll help you. I would say to a friend, or anyone close to me, don't waste another second. Don't hesitate, don't, don't doubt yourself, don't doubt this. I wouldn't trade this program for anything in the world. A million dollars, it was worth so much. You can't put a price on your life, and you can't put a price on this program. I never watch infomercials, no. And I certainly never have ordered anything from the television. And I, one day, just out of impulse, got on the phone and called and said, send me this. Kind of like uh, being sent a life raft as you're sinking. Do you ever have sudden feelings of panic or fear? Do you ever feel like you might lose control? Are you sometimes overwhelmed with worry, anxiety, or depression? I'm Lucinda Bassett, founder of the Midwest Center for Stress and Anxiety, and I suffered with anxiety, depression, and panic attacks for over 20 years. I was afraid of my thoughts, of losing control, of death and dying. I was consumed with worry, but I didn't know that these were some of the symptoms of anxiety and depression. I believe I suffered with anxiety all those years so that I could help other people do what I've done, recover completely. I've produced a seminar on tape that will show you the amazing results that others have achieved and how you can control your anxiety and depression. Medication isn't the long-term answer, and living with constant worry and fear and what-if thinking is exhausting. Call the number on your screen today, and I'll send you my seminar tape for free. Call the number on your screen. Someone who understands what you're going through is waiting to take your call right now. This has made a tremendous difference on how I approach life, how I approach people. If anybody's out there that can benefit from this program, if they even think they can, then I really do recommend it because it, it saved my life. It has changed my life completely. I learned all these skills to take care of myself. I know that this will help you because it has helped me tremendously. I'm just getting so much more out of life on a daily basis and it gave me my life back. Call the number on your screen. Someone who understands what you're going through is waiting to take your call right now. This has been a paid presentation for Attacking Anxiety and Depression.